One of the most popular dividend stocks out there is Realty Income Stock, ticker O, and they're popular for good reason. We can see they have a very nice starting dividend yield sitting at 5.87%. They've been increasing the amount they pay out in dividends for over 25 consecutive years, and they pay out dividends every single month. Now, in this video, we have a lot we need to touch on with Realty Income. We're going to look at their most recent earnings report. We're going to be looking at some recent news from the Federal Reserve. We'll be jumping into their investors presentation and like always jumping into my valuation spreadsheet, which you can download on my Patreon page at the link in the description. So let's go ahead and start digging into it. Now, Realty Income over the past year has way underperformed the market. It's down around 19.21%. And year to date, it's down around 8.24%. Now, the S&P 500 recently hit an all-time high, so why is Realty Income not following along with the S&P 500 and their all-time highs? Well, if you remember a few months ago, the Federal Reserve announced that it was likely we would see rate cuts in 2024. And if we go ahead and zoom out, you can see in October of 2023, Realty Income was sitting at around $46 per share, and in January, it jumped all the way up to around $60 per share. So it saw a nice run up in the share price after the announcement of that news. But recently, we can see the Federal Reserve announced they are wary of cutting interest rates too quickly. And the result of this for realty income was a decrease in their share price. Now, why is that the case? Why is there a correlation of what the Federal Reserve does with interest rates and realty income share price? And this is actually something that I mentioned on my Twitter account just the other day. There's an old Warren Buffett quote that goes, interest rates are to asset prices like gravity is to the apple. They power everything in the economic universe. So we have to keep in mind when people buy realty income, their main focus is getting returns returns through the dividend payouts. And we can see Realty Income's current dividend yield sitting at about 5.87%. But when we're sitting in a high interest rate environment, investors typically like to seek out risk-free returns. And the result of that is less people buying real estate investment trusts like Realty Income. Now, short term, it may make sense to buy some of the risk-free investment opportunities, especially while we're in a high interest rate environment. But long term, I still feel confident that stocks and REITs will outperform, and the data shows that. So when I see declining share prices because of high interest rates, I immediately think there could potentially be opportunity. And we need to see if that's the case currently for Realty Income. Now, they did just recently release their latest quarter's earnings report, but before we look at that, I want to jump into the investors' presentations. There's quite a few slides we can get some information on Realty Income from. Now, the first thing I want to point out is their 2024 guidance. We can see their projected AFFO per share sitting at $4.13 to $4.21. The best way for REITs to drive shareholder returns is by growing their AFFO per share. So if we jump over to the financial statements here on the income statement and scroll down, we want to look for AFFO per share and see if they've been able to grow it over the past decade. And it looks like we can find it right here. And when we look at this charted out, we can see Realty Income's done a very nice job of growing this over time. Now, in December of 2022, we can see their AFFO per share was sitting at about $3.93. And again, projections for 2024 sitting in the range of $4.13 to $4.21. So it is expected to grow at a healthy rate. So that does check my box. Now, the next slide we want to go to is the fourth slide on this investor's presentation. We can see how this REIT is properly diversified. Now, if we come down here, we can see they own over 272 million square feet, have over 1,326 clients in 86 different industries. But here's what's really attractive about Realty Income. 89% of total rent is resilient to economic downturns and or isolated from e-commerce pressures. Now, real estate changed forever in 2020, with people working from home and offices selling their office space. But again, we can see this is not a huge threat to realty income, with over 89% of their total rent resilient to economic downturns. While realty income is mainly known in the U.S., we can actually see they also have a 10.1 billion European portfolio. So really, this is a company with a growing international presence. Now, like I've already mentioned, the main focus for this company for most people is on that dividend. We can see they now have 29 consecutive years of increasing those dividend payments and 644 months in a row of dividend payments. Now, here's what's really impressive. They actually don't increase their dividend payments every single year. They increase them every single quarter. And we can see we now have 105 consecutive quarterly dividend increases. And this is also a company that is a Dividend Aristocrats Index member. Jumping over to the 18th slide. Now, keep in mind, Realty Income has definitely underperformed the S&P 500 over the past year. But since 1994, the compound annual total return is sitting at 13.9%, which way outperforms the market. So that is pretty impressive. And we can see their CAGR for their dividend growth rate sitting at 4.3% over that time period as well, which is actually pretty decent for a real estate investment trust, especially one with a higher starting dividend yield. We can also see they have 27 of 28 years of positive earnings per share growth and a median AFFO per share growth since 1996 
of 5%. That's a pretty healthy rate again for a real estate investment trust. And lastly, on the 29th slide, we can see a breakdown of how their portfolio is currently diversified. Now, many of their top 20 clients are probably familiar names for you. You can see we have companies like Dollar General, Walgreens, Dollar Tree, 7-Eleven, we have FedEx, we have Tractor Supply Co., we have Lifetime Fitness, and even Walmart and Sam's Club. So there are a lot of massive companies that rent from realty income. And we can see when it's broken down by industry, Grocery stores make up around 11.4% of their rent. We can see convenience stores at around 10.2%, dollar stores at 7.1%, home improvement at 5.9%, drug stores 5.5%, restaurants quick service at around 52 and these other industries all a little under 5%. Now, when we look at Realty Income's latest quarter's earnings report, we can see they did see a beat on their revenue, beat by $96.3 million, which was up 21% year over year. That's pretty solid, but they had a slight miss on their funds from operation by around $0.04. Cents. So overall, a somewhat mixed earnings report. Now, let's look at this company from a dividend perspective, and like I've already mentioned, a phenomenal history of increasing those dividend payments every single quarter and every single year, going from around $0.18 cents per share every single month to now sitting at over $0.26 cents per share every single month. If we look at the dividend growth rates for this company over the three, five, and 10 year time periods, it's all pretty solid sitting close to around 4%. Now, when we talk about dividend safety for a real estate investment trust, we can see the dividend payout ratio sitting at 240%. At first glance, that doesn't look good, but we don't wanna look at the earnings payout ratio when we're looking at a real estate investment trust. We wanna look at the AFFO payout ratio. We can see for realty income, Forward looking, sitting at about 74.78% and trailing 12 months, sitting at about 76.48%. So overall, that's a decent AFFO payout ratio for a real estate investment trust. So it's really not something I'm concerned about, especially if they can grow that AFFO at around 5% every year like they have historically done. So now the big question is, is realty income trading at a good price at $52.69? And to answer that question, let's go ahead and jump over to my REIT valuation spreadsheet where we'll look at a few different values valuation models like always. If you'd like to be able to download the spreadsheet, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. Okay, let's go ahead and come over here and plug in stock ticker O and hit enter and you can see all of this data will automatically load in. Let's go ahead and look at the beta right here. You can see sitting at 0.95, so you'll see a little less volatility than that of the market. If we look at our first valuation, I'll go ahead and zoom in and we're looking at the AFFO multiples valuation. What we're doing is we're looking at the price to AFFO multiple of some comparable companies and we can see the average sits at 15.24. Now Realty Income's price to AFFO is currently sitting at 13.07, a little bit lower than the average, indicating that it could be undervalued. So if we applied the same price to AFFO, to realty income, it would give us an intrinsic value of $61.47, a decent bit higher than that current trading price. Now, the next valuation we'll look at is the historical price to FFO valuation. Basically, what we do is we plug in the price per share over the past decade, the FFO per share over the past decade, so we can see that price to FFO, and we can see it charted out. Now, the average price to FFO over the last 10 years is sitting at about 18.7, while the current price to FFO is sitting at 14.23. So compared to where it's traded at historically, again, it looks like it is slightly undervalued. Now, the last valuation model we'll look at right now is going to be our dividend discount model. We look at how much the dividends have grown over time and how much they're currently paying out. When I project a dividend growth rate of around 3.25%, close to the historical average, discount rate of 8%, we come to a dividend discount model price per share of right under $67 per share. So when we look at the output tab, we can see the two valuations that we used. We didn't include the historical price to FFO since it doesn't give us a price per share valuation, but we did come to the conclusion it was undervalued. But still, the average intrinsic value sits at $64.19, a decent bit above that current trading price. So with a 10% margin of safety, acceptable buy price of around $57.77, and with a 20% margin of safety, the acceptable buy price is $51.35. So it's not quite there with a 20% margin of safety, but it is pretty close. So while it is true that right now you can get decent short-term returns risk-free because of the high interest rates, I think long-term realty income looks like a much more attractive option. It appears that the company is currently slightly undervalued. You get a nice starting dividend yield and the potential for a lot of dividend growth and monthly dividend payments.
But there you go. There is a quick analysis on Realty Income Corporation. Go ahead and let me know what you think of this company in the comments down below if you plan on buying or selling. And like always, if you'd like to download this spreadsheet and join a community of dividend investors, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.